Cocktail Sessions, educational and inspirational talks from experienced startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. Let's talk about your company, Social Tables, a little bit. Just give us a quick one-liner about what you're up to. We're a hospitality SaaS. So hospitality software is a service company. Okay. So, but you didn't start straight doing that. So let's talk about where you started and how you figured out to get to that position. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what you talk about in the book is probably the story that is more, most, that resonate with most people here. Just by show of hands, who here has a company? Mm -hmm. Cool, and who here has been doing that for more than, who's B2C? And who's B2B? Yeah, so when I first started Social Tables, I started a, a B2C right. app. You know, it was, it was Facebook, a, right? It was, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Bookface. Uh <-huh>. um, <laughs> so you know, it, was, it was a B2C app. Um, for, uh, for seating charts. And today we are a hospitality platform for hotels and venues used by over 2,000 enterprise clients, mm -hmm. um, including Hyatt. Um, we just signed Four Seasons. So, um, you know, really Goldman Sachs, really, really big customers. Do you get to tr try out those, some of those places? Because they have some nice properties. Yeah, so what's really cool <laughs> about being in the hospitality industry is yeah. when they're really hospitable. Right. So if you go Makes anywhere... Sense. Um, anybody of my 40, my 40 colleagues can go to any city and uh, stay at a customer hotel for a very nice friends and family discount. Awesome. That's yeah. great. All right. So how did you come about that, figuring that out, like that you needed to go that direction? What was like the aha that you're like, this, we're totally messing this up right now and should figure out a new direction? Yeah. You know, I mean, I had, I'm, I, I don't consider myself an entrepreneur. I think that word is reserved for people who've gone public or sold companies. Mm -hmm. I, I was just... To me, social tables were just a side project. Right. Um, I just, I wanted to build something. I programmed it myself really quickly, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a very organic story. Yeah. Um, you know, three that started three years ago, um, and I just wanted to see a seating chart for an event before I got to the, to 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 a wedding. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I saw the seating chart in a digital format, mm -hmm. so I knew that you're sitting over here, Roitz over here, Zainab's over here, Tzvi's over here. Yeah. And I would actually have a more meaningful conversation than just. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, oh, which side of the wedding are you on? Right. Um, bullshit conversation. So I said, let's take the seating chart, making a seating chart tool, connect it to Facebook, and then digitize it to your guests so that they have more meaningful uh, conversations. So pretty simple like, concept is like what you started. Now right. it's a lot more complex, wouldn't you say? Right. So now we're essentially like, anybody know AutoCAD? We're like AutoCAD for events. Wow. Um, and what happened was so we started with seating charts, and then I was like, oh, let's put Carlo over here, and let's put Mark over here. And then we'll well, I want to move a table, I want to move a chair, I want to add a bar. Mm -hmm. um, um, so we got into that. And then you start thinking about meeting design, and you're like, wait, so if you actually think about this room, it's a pretty epic setup, you know? We have cocktails tables in the back, which allow people to socialize and come in and out and not disturb the people seated. We have curved theater rows that make sure that they're actually facing us and all the audience is closer to the stage. The stage is set alongside the room and not on that side, so everybody's closer to the speaker. All these things that go into an event have to really be thought out, and that's what we've done. So we went from being a quick seating chart app to being a, you know, a, a, a meeting planning platform. Right. Um, so that's that's. I mean, I think you you found your path, and it seems to be working right now. So how did you? So from you started as a passion project, though. You mentioned that right. as a side project. A lot of people start that way. Um, would you? Can you give any advice for anybody that's trying to maybe come up with noodle on something and? bring it to life and as they're doing it nights and weekends? Because we'd started that way too, but I'd love to hear your perspective. Right. I mean, I feel like a lot of people just started like, oh, we're going to do everything. We're going to be everything for everybody. And I'm sure, I mean, I think that most great companies start that way. And then they realize, just like to be alluded to, you have to really, you know, focus on, 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 on what you want to do. And um, instead of telling my story, I, I, well, I guess I'll tell my story. I mean, we were a B2C company. We sold uh, events. Uh, if you want to use it, create a seating chart, you sold, we sold you one event credit and you planned your event in social tables. And then we realized the bigger opportunities with businesses, so, we, so one day I literally said, we're doing B2B, we're no longer doing B2C. Mm. And that was probably the most profound moment that we've had that seems so obvious right now. Yeah. But just cutting off all consumer stuff and focusing on B2B, and then again, digging deeper and focusing on just hotels. Was that and scary though? Like, what if, could that have crushed your business? I mean, that's a big change, right? 
What was that like? Yeah, you know, it's funny. It seems like, I mean, you know, I always say, like, you know, yesterday's, yesterday's dreams are today's reality. Like, I don't even think about it that way. Right. But at the time, I just had to make a decision. Mm-hmm. And the more we focused, the better we did. So we, we found out eventually through a very painful process. And you, know, you talk about customer development. It was a very painful process. At that time, I didn't read any of those books that were available. I just, even though they were out there, I thought I knew better. Right. Um, and then I read them after the fact. Um, but I mean, that's sometimes helpful to be a little bit totally. Yeah, we fail yeah. failed fast and often. Absolutely. Right. So, and now we have our we know our core customer, and we and that way you can qualify people before even picking up the phone. Mm-hmm. No, great. Okay, one more thing. You just talked about sales. Um, you built you've built you've been building a team. You've been tr- attracting sales force to to do this. Maybe give a few tips on how to build a, a sales force or team. So number one is read the book Predictable Revenue. Predictable um, Revenue. Yeah, I mean it's a. Great book by the guy who built the Salesforce.com sales organization. Yep, um, Aaron Ross. Mm-hmm. That's probably the first thing. Um, but as far as you know, building a sales org, or maybe how you approach yeah, business development. The way in we general. do it, yeah. The a way one thing we do differently, I think, than other companies, is we put business development on the marketing side. Mm-hmm. So you put business development on the marketing side, then the marketing team essentially is qualifying and scheduling appointments for the sales team, mm-hmm. and then. Once they qualify and there's actually a good lead, then the sales team comes in to close them. Well, we've, you know, the, we've built a highly imitable model so that we can, can, we can scale it really, really fast. And, um, and making sure that marketing is, is, does biz dev for you and appointment scheduling, I think, is really, really important. Okay. Any parting last thoughts you'd like to share? And then we can bring our next guest up. Are people staying here all night? Because I can keep talking. <laughs> We could. Um, Gosh, I mean, um, it's up to you. <laughs> you know, I think I'm, I'm part of this group called Netsito, and I had a meeting today. And one of the issues that came up today was um, hiring and, and retaining talent. Yeah. Um, it's something I'm really passionate about. It's, I have three operating principles. My number one operating principle is being an employer of choice for the right people. And um, uh, you know, when it comes to retaining talent, my number one advice is focus on core values, the sooner the better, yeah. and empower the small team that you have right now to help you establish those core values so you can build on top of that. Because as soon as you have core values, you can then um, measure, um, select, excuse me, attract, select, and retain, and also measure people along those core values. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't pay attention to that, and they realize they get to 30, 40 people like, oh shit, we need, what, who are we? Yeah. Uh, and they have an identity crisis. So do that early. That's great advice. There's actually a whole chapter on it in the book about culture and includes awesome. some core values. Our core values, Zappos is a great example as well. And there's a number of other companies that are really focused on that. So um, definitely agree though. If you can use that as your guiding principles, uh, it's kind of like um, rules of the road. Like if we didn't have rules, like to drive on the right side, like it'd be chaos. <laughs> so it's kind of how it feels like without core values. All right. Thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank really you for including it. me in the book. And I, it's so cool that DC is now, you know, we're collective authors of a book. That's pretty <laughs> badass. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of it. Mm-hmm.